That faint golden blotch you see in this image, that's not just another smudge of light. It's a window into the deepest past we've ever glimpsed. Webb is probing the earliest known structures in the cosmos, the very first patterns ever etched into the fabric of space and time. When astronomers first spotted this glowing shape nearly two years ago, they thought it couldn't possibly be that distant. It was simply too bright. But with better data and precise spectroscopic analysis, the truth became undeniable. That yellow speck isn't just far away. It's the most distant galaxy ever observed. Something extraordinary is happening in the early universe, something our theories can't yet explain. Across Webb's deep field images, astronomers are finding thousands of strange luminous objects unlike anything seen before. They don't behave like galaxies. They don't fit into our models. And yet, they're everywhere. For the first time, Webb has peered beyond the cosmic dark ages into the era when light itself was new and what it found has left scientists astonished. For decades, we've believed the universe began about 13.8 billion years ago, but these newly revealed structures seem to defy that timeline, hinting that the story of the cosmos may be far more complex and perhaps much older than we've imagined. In light of these revelations, even Nobel laureates are beginning to wonder if the early universe was something vastly different from what our models predict. Some go further still, proposing a radical idea that perhaps the universe never had a true beginning at all. It's possible, they suggest, that what we call the early universe might not be the dawn of everything, but something else entirely, something we don't yet understand. The current model of cosmology, known as LCDM, or Lambda Cold Dark Matter, has long served as the standard for explaining cosmic evolution. It assumes that galaxies formed slowly, that stars gather over time, and that the early universe was simple and small. But Webb's discoveries challenge that picture. Many of the objects it's revealed are far too massive, filled with too many stars to have formed so early. According to the standard model, there simply hasn't been enough time or enough matter for such enormous galaxies to exist when the universe was so young. So to make them fit, nearly every atom of ordinary matter in the cosmos would have had to collapse into stars instantly. And that just doesn't make sense. So what did the James Webb Space Telescope really see at the edge of the observable universe? And why are these findings forcing scientists to rethink everything we thought we knew? To answer that, we have to return to one of the most profound discoveries of the 20th century. In 1929, Edwin Hubble revealed that galaxies are moving away from each other, that the universe itself is expanding. But this expansion is unlike anything in ordinary experience. It has no center. Wherever you are, whether on Earth, Mars, or in a galaxy billions of light years away, it appears that everything else is moving away from you. Each point in the universe seems to be the center of its own cosmic balloon. And it's not just expanding, it's accelerating. Distant galaxies are racing away from us faster than nearby ones, as if pushed by an invisible hand. Now imagine standing here on Earth, looking deep into the universe through Webb's powerful mirror. The farther out you look, the farther back in time you're seeing, and the faster those galaxies appear to recede. At a certain distance, there comes a boundary a region of space where galaxies are moving away from us at exactly the speed of light. Astronomers call this the Hubble Sphere, a kind of cosmic horizon beyond which galaxies recede even faster than light itself. Those galaxies are still there, still part of the universe, but their light can never reach us. They're sailing forever beyond our view, carried by the relentless expansion of space. And somewhere beyond that horizon, lies the edge of what we can ever know. Common sense might tell us that light from galaxies moving away faster than light itself should be impossible to see, forever lost beyond reach. But the universe, as always, defies common sense. Astonishingly, we can still observe galaxies that exist beyond the Hubble sphere, the region where cosmic expansion carries galaxies away at the speed of light. How? because the Hubble sphere itself is not fixed. 
it's expanding. As the universe accelerates, this invisible boundary grows, drawing more distant galaxies into our view, even those that are receding faster than light. The light they emitted billions of years ago is still stretching across space, and over time that light can catch up with us as the fabric of space expands. But there is a limit, a cosmic horizon beyond which no light will ever reach us. Scientists call this boundary the observable universe, a vast cosmic bubble roughly 92 billion light years across. When we gaze toward its edge, we're not seeing empty darkness. We're seeing the faint afterglow of creation itself, the cosmic microwave background, the oldest light in existence, echoing from a time when the universe was only 380,000 years old. Every direction we look, every patch of sky, is a window into the deep past. Take, for instance, the most distant galaxy ever detected by the James Webb Space Telescope, JADES-GS-Z14-0. When Webb captured its light, it was looking back more than 13 billion years to a time when the universe was just 290 million years old, a mere infant compared to today. But that galaxy no longer exists as we see it. In the present day, it has moved far beyond our observable horizon, its light forever cut off from us by the relentless expansion of space. Its stars have likely burned out, merged, or transformed into entirely new systems, yet Webb's image preserves the faint memory of what once was. And beyond that horizon, beyond what we can ever see, the universe continues. There are more galaxies, more stars, and perhaps even other realms of physics waiting in the infinite beyond. It's important to remember, this cosmic boundary is not a physical wall. It's a limit defined by our perspective. For any other civilization elsewhere in the cosmos, their observable universe would be centered on them, encompassing a different volume of space-time altogether. According to our standard cosmological model, everything within this visible bubble and all that lies beyond once emerged from an unimaginably dense state about 13.8 billion years ago. We call it the Big Bang, though that name can be misleading. It's easy to imagine the Big Bang as an explosion from a single point into empty space, but that's not what happened. If the universe is truly infinite, then it has always been infinite. The Big Bang didn't occur at a location. It happened everywhere, all at once. Every galaxy, every atom, every wisp of cosmic dust emerged from that same moment of creation, scattered throughout space in every direction, even beyond what we can see. The cosmic microwave background that fills our sky isn't coming from one side or one place. It's the remnant glow of that universal beginning, radiating from every direction the faint whisper of matter's first light. For nearly a century, this has been the foundation of cosmology, our grand narrative of where we came from. But now, the James Webb Space Telescope is challenging that story. When Webb peered into the deepest reaches of space, into the era where the first stars and galaxies were supposed to appear, it found something completely unexpected. Instead of small, dim, newly forming galaxies, it saw brilliant, compact objects that defied all predictions. Objects too massive, too bright, and too evolved to belong to such a young universe. These strange lights shouldn't exist, and yet there they are, shining across billions of years, rewriting everything we thought we knew about cosmic history. Despite countless observations and new data, these mysterious cosmic objects continue to baffle astronomers. Recently, a study published in the Astrophysical Journal revealed something extraordinary. Researchers identified 87 candidate galaxies that may have existed just 200 to 400 million years after the Big Bang. That's astonishingly early, far earlier than our models say galaxies should exist at all. According to current cosmological theory, the universe at that age was still in its infancy, too young, 
too chaotic and too hot for galaxies to have formed in such abundance. Lead researcher Hao Jing Yan, an astronomer deeply involved in the study, put it simply, even if only a few of these galaxies are real, we will have to rethink how the first galaxies formed. Take a look at this remarkable image, an early galaxy shining brightly against the darkness of deep time. It challenges every rule we thought we understood about how galaxies are built. Normally, galaxies form slowly from swirling clouds of gas and dust, gradually converting small portions of that material into stars. In fact, in most galaxies we observe today, only about 10% of the available gas ever becomes stars. The rest remains as raw material, a cosmic reservoir for future generations of stars. But the James Webb Space Telescope has uncovered something that doesn't fit that pattern at all. Deep in the early universe, Webb identified three galaxies so extreme that they seem almost impossible. Spectroscopic data, essentially the fingerprints of light from these systems, revealed something astonishing. These galaxies appeared to have turned nearly 100% of their surrounding material into stars. That's not just unusual, it's supposed to be impossible. According to our current models, no known process could convert all available matter into stars so quickly after the Big Bang. It's as if these galaxies skipped the normal rules of cosmic evolution and went straight from chaos to completion. This discovery has left astronomers genuinely perplexed. How could these galaxies form so soon? Why are they so massive, so bright, and so well-structured in a universe that should have been still shrouded in darkness? Some scientists are beginning to wonder whether these strange objects are galaxies at all. Perhaps there's something new, a class of cosmic structure we've never encountered before. And if by chance they really are galaxies, then our understanding of the Big Bang itself could be incomplete or even fundamentally flawed. Because these systems shouldn't exist so soon after creation, yet there they are, glowing defiantly from the dawn of time, silent witnesses to a cosmic story we may not yet fully understand.